Hey everybody, it's Mick Lubinskis here, author of She's Building a Robot, and I am lucky to be joined by Melissa O oh from Fremont, California. Hey Melissa, how are you going? Hey Mick, how are you? Good, thank you. A huge thank you to Joanne Norley who gave me an introduction to you and the team. Um, Melissa, I'd love to start by knowing what your, what your role is now and then um, hear, hear about how you came to be in that role, about what your journey was. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's it's a pretty interesting journey, I, I suppose. I'm actually originally from the Silicon Valley, so I grew up kind of around tech, um, but uh, really wanted to get into public service. And after 9-11 happened, I moved to D.C. And, and got into the Department of Homeland Security. So in my role now, I am the managing director for the Silicon Valley Innovation Program at uh, DHS's Science and Technology Directorate. Um, so what I do is 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 pretty fun. I actually get to um, engage with startups, try to get them to understand what DHS's mission is and, uh, and uh, inspire them to partner with us to build technologies to uh, aid in, in the Homeland Security mission. Um, so, uh, but getting, getting to where I am now was, as, as, uh, as you mentioned, is, has been a journey, um, but it's one in which I've, uh, I've been fortunate to have people along the way kind of guide me. Um, and uh, have been uh, very thankful that I, I get to do something I really love doing. Can, can you tell, tell me a bit more about those people? Because I, I hear this a lot that there is, sometimes it's just one supportive person or it's a, some people are lucky enough to have multiple of them. It could be just one teacher they had once who just gave them a book. Can you tell us a bit about some of those influences on you and, and what were some of those pivotal moments? Well, I guess um, really the the main influence that I had uh, to get into Homeland Security and then in, into the tech realm was someone who believed in in a college student who didn't have any direction um, and uh, just had a passion for public service. So this was kind of a, a, a family friend and auntie who happened to be uh, an, an auntie who wasn't related to me, but uh, um, but one of those but one of those uh, uh, good family friends um, who was already working in DC and saw that I. Uh, I was interested in tech and I wanted to apply that to public service. So she brought me um, in uh, to DHS and helped kind of um, shepherd me, uh, shepherd me through, through the process, uh, which can be a bit daunting getting into kind of federal government, federal service and trying to understand um, the, 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 um, how to get through every, every uh, nook and cranny of, of government uh, and politics. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. And I'd, I'd love to drill into this in, in, a, in a world of, of sometimes excessive capitalism uh, and coming from Silicon Valley where it might be a, the easy choice to go and join a startup, start a startup and aim for billions. Um, that choice about public service, I think, is a, is a, is a wonderful one. And I, I know a lot of people make it, but I'd love to hear like what, what were the drivers for you? Was it, you mentioned 9-11, uh, uh, what what are the drivers and, and what was, can you tell us a little bit about the difference between your initial uh, expectations and, and the realities? Uh, I'm sure there's some good and good and good and bad on, 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 on that side. Oh yeah, sure. Um, so the, the thing that drove me into public service was definitely, a lot of it was 9-11. Um, 9-11 happened um, uh, my junior, between my junior and my senior year of undergraduate. And so I, uh, I felt really um, passionate to, to fill the call uh, for public service to kind of see if I can utilize whatever uh, young knowledge I had to, to do my part uh, in, uh, in DHS. And DHS was just forming at that time. So it was a really opportune time for me to be able to, um, to see what I could contribute towards. Um, but definitely getting into um, uh, to tech and, and trying to see how that can apply to public service was definitely um, somewhat a, 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 a new challenge. I think in a lot of cases, there's been a lot of work that's occurred in the Department of Defense and other places where technology plays a large uh, role. Um, and uh, I, I definitely felt that that, could, uh, that I could contribute there. Um, some of the challenges that I faced as I entered uh, public service was definitely um, being young and having kind of the 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 getting the looks of oh well you're too young to do this or you're uh, uh, you know I don't think you'll understand how to do this and so kind of just trying to ignore those negative um, negative uh, thoughts and just power through uh, prove 
to those around me that I could actually do the job and, um, and then just set the bar higher and higher for myself uh, and just do my best pretty much. Wow, amazing. And you've got a really uh, challenging role now in terms of a DHS and innovation in Silicon Valley. Can you tell us a bit about how, how innovation and, and agile and lean approaches where it's a lot about taking risks apply in an area Obviously, we, we don't want any uh, super secrets, but it, from the principle and philosophy perspective, um, when I start, if I start a startup, I've got nothing to lose. I'll put it out there, if fails, who cares? I'll learn something. But there's a lot at stake in, in your work. How do you how do you bring those two things together? Oh yes, um, and that's that's a lot a lot of what I do is um, a lot of outreach and engagement with uh, the investment community, with entrepreneurs, helping them understand not only what our mission is, but how we can find a way to find mutual benefit uh, with each other um, to partner together. Not every technology is going to be a great fit for what we're looking for. Um, and nothing super secret with what I do. I, since I work with startups, I, I, uh, I'm very intentional about making sure that the, that the, the work that we go out towards uh, the startups are unclassified, something that we could work towards. Um, ultimately, my goal is to find commercial technologies that can have DHS's requirements baked into those commercial products. So keeping startups on their commercial roadmap, um, not deviating or pivoting away and just seeking government business. We wanna make sure that those startups stay successful and stay commercially viable. Um, our, our, our main in, uh, interest is really to make sure that those commercial products become products that the government can purchase as well. Um, and so um, helping them understand uh, what our pain points are and then helping us realize where there may be interesting uh, technologies they're developing that can, um, that can benefit us. So a lot of what I do is talk about the pain points, talk about the use cases and allow the innovators to come to us and say, hey, I know you want a technology that can accomplish this, I don't think you're thinking about it in this way, but have you thought about using this kind of technology to achieve that? Um, and letting them be creative, letting them be the ones to think through some of the hard problems, which I know that they thrive at trying to, uh, they thrive at, at a challenge. So it's, it's been really exciting and interesting to work with them. It's so interesting that you go so early stage uh, because I, I think that's obviously where there's flexibility, but there is all, also less reliability. And uh, I guess it's um, it, it, being in Silicon Valley, you're just getting to uh, getting comfortable with the fact that sometimes that's the case. But if we keep working together, we'll get to we'll get to reliability faster together. Absolutely, and and the, the case of risk, right? Um, in any kind of R and D organization, there exists the the potential for failure, and some aspect of finding and succeeding is to to to. Uh, to realize that failure. But my, my intent and expectation is that by working with companies that are focused on a commercial product, they've got uh, a board, they've got a board, they've got other, um, others around them that are advising them on how to be successful, that we're ultimately working with companies that have a lot more diligence behind them than say perhaps a company that is purely focused on government uh, and has to rely on those government contracts to come through. Um, so this is this is one 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 avenue for the government to kind of um, spread our risk um, into innovative companies that have focused on commercial. Um, that said, you know there's plenty of research and development that occurs where um, the government absolutely needs to focus um, a lot of effort on because no one else is doing it out there. And so this is not a takeaway from that. This is to say, hey, we've got another pathway we can we can pursue to get uh, to get additional technologies that we haven't gotten before. Uh, really interesting. And amongst all of that, uh, I, I'm guessing over the last 19 years of your, your career in with um, Department of Homeland Security, there's been lots of changes as the, the whole world has been changed as well. Uh, in terms of well, women in tech, I certainly know 20 years ago, it, there, there wasn't nearly enough and we still haven't gone far enough. Have you seen any positive trends or programs that of note or any particular instances or stories which um, sort of suggest that um, things are moving in the right direction? Oh, absolutely. I think that um, there's been a lot of um, interesting conversations I've had with many founders, uh, particularly female founders who are really excited to 
uh, to, um, to know about our program because a lot of, uh, you know, in, in some ways historically, um, they've, they've found it challenging to raise capital. Um, and so the, the fact that there's a, a program here that exists to, uh, to get to startups, um, and in many cases, a lot of those are female founders, um, you know, that's been very encouraging to hear. And, uh, and so we, we definitely make an effort to try and make sure that we're reaching communities that may have not, um, that may have, uh, that, that are, are seeking capital as well. So making sure that we're reaching uh, the uh, women, con female, female founder conferences um, and minority uh, conferences and, and all, uh, all the folks that uh, are, are seeking um, support. And you know, we're the government, we're actually just looking for the best talent out there. Um, and so we're, we're just excited when we get some, some really interesting solutions to the pipeline. That's fantastic. And uh, from your perspective, in terms of having a leadership role in technology and, and in government, uh, how are you seeing um, the culture of Silicon Valley um, changing? Is it, um, I know it's big and uh, big and at times very um, a tough space to be, but uh, is, uh, are, there, are there other things you've seen certainly after leaving and then coming back that you uh, think are worth talking about? I think it's a it's an interesting dynamic that I've, I'm observing. You know, back before um, there used to be a lot of uh, government funding targeting uh, research and development, uh, and less with private R and D. And now the the pendulum has kind of swung the other direction, where um, like programs like myself and others in, uh, in uh, across the government are looking at how do we leverage commercial technologies. So, in terms of the way Silicon Valley has changed, I think that. Um, trying to inspire those Silicon Valley founders and technology entrepreneurs to recognize that we can be a partner, um, much like you know GPS sort of started out in uh, in government and pivoted into commercial. Uh, we're seeing the swing of some uh, technologies that start commercial, pivot into government, and then also are are in turn uh, taking another pivot back into commercial in a, in a different direction. Um, so, you know, for example, if you, if, uh, an example that I, I have is uh, 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 cybersecurity. Um, when it comes to uh, uh, small, uh, those, you know, cons consumer sized drones, you know, there's very little looked at from a cybersecurity aspect because they're consumer sized drones. Why is that that important? Um, well, it is actually very important, especially if uh, in the government side we start to explore the use of them. Um, and so, as we were taking a look and evaluating whether the government uh, DHS wanted to utilize small consumer sized drones uh, for our mission, we wanted to make sure that those had um, cybersecurity built in. And uh, come, come, uh, come to find that, uh, interestingly, the media, um, entertainment, that sector is really interested in making sure those uh, consumer sized drones that they use for filming um, aren't able to get hacked um, and any of the uh, content that they're trying to produce doesn't get somehow um, streamed earlier than they're, than they're willing to, to share. So um, it's an interesting uh, direction how some of the technology is pivoting uh, from commercial to government and then back from government to commercial again. Super interesting. And uh, I don't know if you have opportunities to do either mentoring for um, young girls who are interested in science, technology, engineering, and maths. But um, if you if you had advice for for those sort of girls who may be thinking about a career, and you mentioned that you didn't exactly know what you wanted to do even after college, and I still don't know exactly what I want to do with the rest of my life. But uh, any advice or thoughts you have for for teenage girls who are excited about science and technology and maybe wondering what life's like? Um, I would I would definitely just tell them to. Um, you know, follow, follow their curiosity, find something that they're interested in and, and, and pursue that. Um, I find that when you're passionate about something, there's endless pathways that you can take um, that will uh, fulfill something that you're, that you're, that you can spend lots of time working on. Um, and so I, I would just say, follow your cur curiosity. I know that's kind of very nebulous, but um, that's how I kind of got into tech in a way. You know, I studied cognitive neuroscience. It was basically the only major that I found interesting. Um, and, uh, and because of that, I actually did well. And so um, that kind of helps kind of get you to places. If you can, if you can succeed in something that you're interested in, I think that can take you, take you pretty far. Yeah, that's great. Really good advice. I think it's uh, sometimes tough to be bold like that and it may go against your 
parents or social conventions or and maybe maybe you, you well nearly everything you do is going to get pressure and I think certainly the bolder you are the probably the more pressure and naysayers you may get but um I agree with you it's it, back yourself believe in yourself and um, you'll be surprised how where the opportunities come from so Melissa thank you so much for sharing your, your story and your journey and um, thanks for playing such a strong leadership role in uh, technology for a really important area and um, and again if there's any um, any um, mentoring or role modeling you can do for young girls around Silicon Valley that'd be that's fantastic and great to see so Melissa thanks again for your time and um, we'll uh, love to stay in touch Thank you for the time, Nick, and happy to.